In the next few minutes we're going to take a look at a loop AM3440 and the controller menu and how to get around some basics. Log in first. Oh. It may or may not have a password. Initially it doesn't. You connect 9600891. In this case we're connecting Telnet. Here's the address up here. 192.168.3229. We did some pre-setup. If you hadn't done it, this would be a straight serial connection. S for the system setup. A for basic system information. To get around on the screen, note arrow keys, cursor move, please input hour, minute, seconds, and so on, backspace to edit. So if we don't like this date, we can backspace we like it. We're finished. Arrow down. If we want to change this, then call this test or not test. We got rid of it. Let's put test back in. T-E-S-T. -E this time it's in lowercase. If you want to connect to it locally via Telnet, you need an IP address and a subnet mask. And you turn LAN on. If we tab down to here, this is highlighted. If we tab, it's off, on, off, on. That's the tab key. If we're going through the network, we would turn WAN on. We aren't. Our gateway interface right now is LAN. It could be WAN, LAN. The tab key toggles that. You may need a gateway address. Perhaps not. In-band slot, don't worry about that. That's really not relevant anymore. We continue on down the page. Most units will be set up bidirectional for a ring or for certain monitoring situations. If you get more familiar with the unit, you may choose to do the uh, one to N multicast. Can't be done now. There are TSI maps in place in this unit. Idle signaling, normally you would leave that alone, and the same with the clock mode and we escape there. If you want to save this configuration, Y for yes. And next one, SNMP setup. If you're going to use the MAP34 software for configuring the MAP, or some alarm system, INMS from Loop, uh, Loop View Plus Advanced, any kind of other SNMP system, here you want to go in. Here's where you uh, give the device a name, system location, and so on, and what version of SNMP you wish to use. And under B, for version 1, trap setup. If you have it public, that's fine. Uh, if you're not you're running traps to any SNMP server, you don't need to worry about that. Escape, and then C, D, E, F have... Uh, version 3 setup, which is probably not relevant. Eventually, when you get around to mapping, this is where you do the map setup. C. Again, the cursor moves you around the page. Tab changes the options. There are four maps. Map 1, 2, 3, 4. Back to 1. Down here, tab to various slots. And up at the top, tells you what slot you found. You can tab or backspace to go backwards forwards. That's the port for a slot. Uh, we're looking at a T1 card so it has multiple ports, four of them. This means which time slot you want to start at. This is quantity. The number sign means quantity. This means do you want to clear it? or not. If you say no, you're adding. D for data, V for voice. We'll move down here. Tab, data, voice, data, voice. And then source. So they talk about target and source for bidirectional mapping. Target and source are not relevant. When you get all the way to the bottom of the page, you continue to arrow down. When you're finished, you escape from the page. D is on the next screen. We'll escape and we find D. Here is where you activate a map. You press 
D, Escape. It'll say, do you really want to do this? If you say yes, you're activating the map. And if you want to save it, you can type the letter V, Store Save, and you'll immediately store the map. If not, let's go back here to System Setup, S. And under System Setup, we have something called Command Line, L. Normally, you would not use this. Question mark gives you the commands. Auto save. Let's type that command A U T O underscore S A V E. Enter. And it tells us that default from the factory, the unit will auto save every 300 seconds or every five minutes. Let's get out of the screen. Q U I. T. If you're going to leave the machine on for five minutes after your last activity, it'll automatically save. Otherwise, force a save. And we've got protection and so on. These are more advanced settings down here. There's some ring software that would fill in this gap between K and N. It's called ULSR PDH Ring. Let's get back to the main page. There are various slots. Here's how you choose it. To see what's in the box, we type I, Information Summary. Here are the cards. Let's look at just one for a moment. Quad T1. We escape. Select a slot U. Letter U. Down at the bottom here we have a choice. We'll type in 1. Enter. And here are the various setup options. This is the key for most of them. S. System Setup framing, coding, channel associated signaling, protection, and so on. These items that are blacked out and not blue are not changed or cannot be changed once mapping has commenced with the exception of CAS which may be changeable via the MAP34 software but not within the serial telnet console. Once this is changed, you press escape, it'll say do you want to change it, yes or no, and so on. To get back to the main screen, you exit, think E, exit, return to the main controller, E, and we're back at the main controller. And that's it for this introductory video.